boiling in my spirit. And I pray that God and the Holy Spirit will give me the grace to really minister it to you the way I see it and I feel it in my spirit. Somebody say amen. amen. So Father God, I just thank you for this day, Lord. I just bless you, Father. I just give you great. Um, I just give you honor, adoration, and worship, Father God. I thank you for what you are doing in my life, Father. I thank you for what you are doing in this ministry. I thank you for shaping us, for molding us, for cleaning us, for purifying us, and for establishing us in the name of your Lord Jesus, I, of your Son Jesus. I pray for this word, God, that you will divide this word according to the need of each and every one of us present here in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 So, I've been pondering, I stumbled upon a scripture, I think last week, when I was preparing for a conference that I was invited to preach last week. And I stumbled upon a scripture that has really, really captured my heart. Amen. And I've been meditating on this scripture, and I believe that this scripture is really about to bless all of us. How many of you believe it? Amen. And the title of my message is called Another Spirit. Somebody say Another Spirit. Another spirit. Amen. And, and as we go on, you are going to understand the, the meaning of this title. Amen. So let's begin to, to, before we get to our foundational scripture, I want to read a little bit of a background of how that scripture came to pass in the first place. Amen. Amen. So let's go to Numbers chapter 13. We are going to read a long scripture, but it's going to be profitable unto us. Amen. Amen. So let's be patient and be focused. Amen. Hallelujah. Numbers chapter 13. If you are there, you say hallelujah. Numbers chapter 13. Is somebody there already? Amen. And we are going to start from verse 1. I think we are going to read the whole scripture. Uh, we are going to read. I'm going to tell you when to skip, but we are going to read most of it. Amen. Hallelujah. Is everybody there? Amen. Amen. So it says, I'm reading from the, I'm in my English version, of course. It says, the Lord said to Moses, send men to exploit Cana, which I am giving to the Israelites. Send one leader from each um, of their ancestors' tribe. So at the Lord's command, Moses sent these men from the desert of Paran. All of them were leaders of Israelites. These are their names. So God gave here 12 different men. And in this list, you will see that one of the men is Caleb, and one of them is also Joshua. Amen? So we drop now to verse 16. I'm just trying to, to skip some things so we can move forward with the word. Amen? And then verse 16 says, These are the names of the men Moses sent to exploit the land. But Moses gave Hosea, son of Nun, the name Joshua. Amen? So in the 12 people that Moses sent, there was also Joshua and Caleb. Are you guys following me? Then verse 17 says, When Moses sent them to exploit Canaan, he told them, go through the Negev and then into the mountain region. See what the land is like and whether the people living there are strong or weak, few or many. So he's sending them to go and spy the land. Number verse 19. Is the land, is the land they live in good or bad? Do their cities have walls around them or not? Is the soil rich or poor? Does the land have trees or not? Do your, do your best to bring back some of the fruits from the land. It was the season when grapes were beginning to ripen. 21. So the men explored the land from the desert of Zin to the border of Hamath. They went through the Negev and came to Hebron, where Ahiman, Shishia, and Tamer lived. They are descendants of Anak. Hebron was built seven years before Zoan in Egypt, 20, verse 23. When they came to the Exhorn Valley, they cut off a branch with only one bunch of grapes on it. They carried it on a pole between two of them. They also brought some um, pomegranates and figs, verse 24. So they called that valley Echon, bunch of grapes, because the bunch of grapes. 
because of the bunch of grapes, the Israelites cut off there. Forty days later, amen. So they stayed there forty days. Now, forty days later, they came back from exploring the land. They came back to Moses, Aaron, and the whole community of Israel at Kadesh in the in the desert of Paran. They gave their report and shown them the fruit from the land. This is what they reported to Moses. We went to the land where you sent out us. It really is a land flowing with milk and honey. Yes, some of its fruit, but the people who live there are strong, and the cities have walls and are very large. We even saw the descendants of Anak there. The Amalekites live in the Negev. The Hittites, the Jebusites, and the Amorites live in the mountain region. And the Canaanites live along the coast of the Mediterranean Sea and all along the river, the Jordan River. Caleb told the people, now pay attention to verse 30, amen? Now Caleb told the people, be quiet and listen to Moses. Caleb said, let's go now and take possession of the land. We should be more than able to conquer it. Is somebody see what Caleb is doing? In the, in the midst of the negative report that everybody was speaking out fear, speaking out doubt, speaking out, you know, on, on, uh, like as if God is a small God, Caleb had to rose up in the midst of the other people. Amen? They were saying 12 men. Now one man is rising up. Amen? And he said, no, let's, let's go now. We can take possession of the land. We should be more than able to conquer it. Amen? That's a powerful positive voice. Amen? Amen? But the men who had gone with him said, we can't attack this, those people. They, are too, they began to spread lies among the Israelites about the land they had exploited. They said, the land we exploit is one, is one that devours those who live there. All the people we saw there were very tall. You see, they're just speaking out these lies and these fears and this very discouraging report. Amen. And they were spreading it in the camp. Amen. All the people we saw there are very tall. Their perspective was very strange. Amen. We saw Nephilim there, the descendant of Anak, uh, uh, the Anak uh, Nephilim. We felt as small as grasshoppers. And that's how we must have been looked by them. Amen. So these other people came with a negative report. And they were saying how they were giants in the land. And they are too strong. They will not be able to take them. And all of those other things were going on. But there was a man there with a different spirit. But we are focusing on Caleb. But there was also Joshua amongst them who was also very positive. But today we want to keep our mind and hearts focused on the man that God called a man with a different spirit. Turn to your neighbor and say, I have a different spirit. I have a different spirit. Hallelujah. And that's where we really want to go today. In chapter also, in chapter 14. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. In chapter 14, we see the rebellion of the people. Can we go to chapter 14? So now, the verses that we have just read, not only did we see the negative report of the people and the way they were behaving, their discouragement, and how they had an attitude of spreading lies in the camp, they were actually really sp spreading a virus to contaminate the other people in the land. They were trying to weaken the people of God. They were trying to weaken the leadership. So they carried this negative spirit and they were spreading it around. Amen? And then now when we move to chapter 14, we also see their rebellion. Amen? Let's read chapter 14, Numbers chapter 14 from verse 6 to 9. Numbers chapter 14 from verse 6 to 9. Hallelujah. If you are there, you say hallelujah. hallelujah. Okay, Numbers and chapter 14, verse 6 to verse 9 says, and Joshua the son of Nun, and Caleb the son of Jephunneh, Jephunneh, which were of them that searched the land. So he's talking about two distinguished men, amen. Rent their cloth. Because if you read from chapter 1, 
you will see that the people of Israel now and those who went to spy because of this negative report, they have carried a different kind of a spirit, but a very negative, ungodly spirit. They were speaking against Moses, their leader. They were speaking against God. They were speaking against, they were saying, why did God even bother to bring us here? These are the same people who were crying for years, God deliver us. And God finally delivered them and brought them to where they were. And God was about to take them to the promised land. But now, because of their own kind of mindset and the kind of spirit that was carried by the people, this rumor was being spread around and they rose up against the leadership. They rose up against the decrees of God, the things of God, and they developed a wrong spirit. They developed a complaining spirit. They developed a, a murmuring spirit. They developed a discouraging spirit. They, dis they, they developed a spirit of telling lies and argument. Amen? And they were rebelling against the decrees and the commandments of God. Is somebody with me? Amen. Just think I ever sit and leave it. Hey, ever sit and so let's, so, so let's read what it says again. And Joshua the son of Nob, and Caleb the son of Josna, Amen, which were them of them which searched the land, rent their cloth, which means they became so distressed by the action of the people of, of Israel, and they tore off their cloth. Amen. They were very disturbed. Verse 7 says, And they spake unto all the company of the children of Israel, saying, The land which we pass through, to search it is an exceeding good land. Amen? Amen. The other people had negative reports, negative things to say, and they were discouraged and lying and doing all the things. But the way these two men, we were different. Amen? God will always give you a different people in the midst of all the other ones who dare to speak negatively or bring discouragement. Amen? Yes. Out of 12, only two, can you imagine? Yes. Only two was positive. Amen? So it, it is very encouraging um, and peace that we are reading here. And they say no, they saw things differently. They were able to speak differently because we were able to see differently. Amen. Amen? It's, it's very difficult to speak differently if you cannot see differently. Amen? It's all in your mind, our mentality, how we perceive things. Hallelujah. And then and verse, um, verse 8 says, If the Lord delight in us, then he will bring us into this land and give it to us. Faith, encouragement, amen, boldness, and tenacity. He will, I mean, they are proclaiming, they are prophesying. If God truly is with us and he delights in us, he is going to give us this land no matter what we see. How many of you believe it? No matter what you see, no matter the negativity, there needs to be a people who say, it doesn't matter what we see. It doesn't matter the giants that we see. If God is truly with us, if God is truly for us, if God delights in us, he will give us this land. That's a spirit of the winner. Amen. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. And verse 9 says, and he says, if the Lord delights in us, verse 6, if the, no, verse 8, sorry, if the Lord delights in us, then he will bring us into this land and give it to us, a land which floweth with milk and honey. Only rebel, number 9 says, only rebel not ye against the Lord. And they begin to caution the people. They say that the actions you are doing, you may think you are just doing it unto the leader, but you are rebelling against the Lord. So the only thing you should do do not rebel against the Lord. Neither fear ye the people of the land, for they are bread for us. Neither defense is depart from them. Amen. And the Lord is with us. Fear not. Somebody say the Lord is with us. The Lord is with us. Fear not. I speak to the oversight. The Lord is with us. Fear not. Hallelujah. And then now I want to take you to my foundational. Um, a verse of today where I got the topic another spirit. Somebody say another spirit. So now we have the background of the story of how God sent through Moses, God sent 12 men into a land to go and spy the land and come back with a report. And how 10 of them came back very, very negative, polluting the, the rest. Amen. But we saw the spirit of two distinguished men. We came who came back with a different report. All of us can be looking at the same thing and come out with a different perspective, amen? amen. Different idea and different opinion about a particular yeah, thing. 
Amen. Hallelujah. So, um, thank you, Father. So, we will now we go to Numbers 14 24. Let's go to Numbers 14 24. Numbery 18, verse 4 and 20. If you are there, you say hallelujah. It says, But my servant Caleb, because he had another spirit. Somebody said another spirit. Another spirit. Because he had another spirit with him and has followed me fully, him will I bring into the land where into he went, and his seed shall possess it. You see, out of how many people, while we are focusing on Caleb now, we can say, out of 11 people, even though Joshua was also positive, but there was something about Caleb that attracted God. Amen? His attitude, his mannerism, his way of speaking, his faith, the way that he obeyed the commandments of God. Amen? God said, because of this, I have seen the spirit of him. We all can act in a certain way or talk in a certain way, but there's always a spirit upon us. And everybody can miss the kind of spirit that we may carry. But God does not miss the spirit of a man. The Bible says the heart is very deceitful and is very wicked. Who knows it better? You can be with people and they are even complotting to kill you. You may think they are still friends. Amen? But only God knows the heart of a man. Only God knows the spirit of a man. The motives of a man. The true intentions of a man. And God saw that other spirit, not the spirit that the rest of them had, but the spirit that the other people didn't have, God could see it in Caleb. Amen. Is somebody with me today? Amen. God could see it in Caleb. They were all behaving a certain way, but God said, no, this one is a different person. Say, I am a different person. I am a different person. And because of what God now saw in Caleb, God made him a promise. God said, I've seen that you have a different spirit and you have followed me wholeheartedly. You have followed me fully. So it is not enough to follow God one foot in and one foot out. Amen. But God desires for us to follow him fully. Amen. God wants complete submission. God wants complete obedience. Half obedience is total disobedience. Amen. And God saw that in Canada, he was a man who followed God in all his ways. And then God said, because of this, I always tell people, God is a God of condition. People always say, God bless me. Yeah, I'm going to the next level. No, you are not. If you are not fully submitted to God, if you are not committed to God, if the things you do, the decisions you take, they are not in alignment with the word of God, I am sorry you are going nowhere. Amen. Does anybody want the truth in the house of the Lord? Amen. Hallelujah. He said, because I've seen you, how you follow me fully, I will bring you into the land. Which land? The promised land. How many of you believe that there are things that God has promised us? But why God has a promise for us? God is also looking at how, at how we are behaving. God is looking at our character. God is looking at our spirit, our heart, our motives. At home, what do you do? What do you say? What do you pray? How do you have you interact with other Christians? Amen. God is taking into consideration everything we do every day we wake up. And depending on the things that God sees in us. Amen. Then God will say, okay, either you are ready for the, for the promised land or you are not ready. Is somebody with me? Amen. And God did not all only promise something to, to Caleb. God made him a promise. He said, because you have a different spirit. I am telling you as parents, our actions, if we are not careful, we affect our children. Amen? So be careful the seed you sow. Amen? I always tell people, if you are wicked to everybody, you will reap what to sow and it will follow your children if somebody doesn't repent. Our good actions, we follow our children. When you sow good seed, you will not only reap that good seed, but your children also will reap good seed because your children are connected to you. Hello? Amen. So be careful the seed you sow. 
Whether it is by words or, or your action, be careful the seeds you sow. Is somebody with me? He said, because you have sown a good seed, I will not only bless you by bringing you into the promised land, but I will also bless your seed. Your seed will possess that land. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So in this next season, your attitude will determine your breakthrough. Is somebody with me today? Amen. Your attitude will determine your breakthrough. And in order to have the right attitude, we must have the right perspective. We must have, we must have the right way of seeing things. If everybody is saying, no, that was really bad, really bad, really bad. Are you the one who can take a step behind and say, no, let me look at the thing from a different position. Let me look at that thing from the position of the word of God. From the position of the spirit of God. Or are you one who just goes with the crowd? If everybody says it's bad and you join them and say yes, it's bad. Or are you able to rise up like Caleb and say no, everything is not bad. Something is bad. Is somebody with me? Amen. Hallelujah. So your attitude will determine your breakthrough. And it's very important in order to have the right attitude. To first check how we see things. Hallelujah. Amen. In every situation we encounter, we must take a time and, uh, and, and do a check spiritually. Am I seeing it rightly? Am I understanding it rightly? Before you make a decision. Amen. Amen. We know and remember our God is. It's important in every situation. No matter how bad it is, always know and always remember who your God is. Because if you forget who your God is, panic will easily come in. You'll be moving by the spirit of fear, instead by the spirit of faith. Hallelujah. Amen. So we must always remember who our God is. I believe Caleb was able to have a different mindset and a different way of seeing things and a different way of speaking because no matter what they were going through, no matter what they have been through, Caleb never forgot the mighty God that he served. Amen. Because after all, this is the same God who delivered them from the mighty hand of Pharaoh. Hallelujah. So how can they come out of that kind of a situation? And God opened the Red Sea for, for, for them. And all of a sudden now, they, they, are, they are afraid of giants. They begin to see people that their God can take down as giants who can take them down. Hallelujah. Amen. In every situation, you must remember who your God is. Amen. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And I, I believe that in this season, we really need to watch out for certain things. Because many people for years have been sowing and doing a lot of things. But they are still where they are because of their attitude. Attitude is something that God does not take lightly. God looks at your attitude. Amen. And there are different ways that we can, we can, we, we can test a person's attitude. Some people have a grumbling attitude. Always grumbling about everything. Nothing is ever good. Nothing is ever right. Nothing is ever blessed. You grumble from the one great two. You only grumble. Amen? Amen. A complaining spirit is a wrong attitude. If you are a person, you complain. When the sun is shining, you are, yeah, the sun is shining me there. Yeah, it's warm. And, and the cold comes, yeah, it is me to count. Eh? It's never good. It's a wrong attitude. It's a wrong spirit. And because of the way you see things daily, you always walk around as if Jesus is dead. But I come to announce to somebody, Jesus is not dead. Jesus is alive. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Ungrateful attitude. There are people who are ungrateful. No matter what you do to them, no matter what you do for them, they will always find a way to complain and to condemn you and to discredit you. Never grateful the things that God will use somebody to do in their life. Amen? You can do 10,000 good things, but one wrong thing you do, you are no more qualified in their eyes. Ungratefulness. Things that God has done for us. Do we take the time to say, God, thank you. I may not have the job I want, but at least I have a job that I can put bread on my table. Do we have that kind of an attitude? Amen. God, we always bless a person with a grateful attitude. Because Bible, the Bible says, in all things give God thanks. In everything give thanks. You may lose your job, thank you Jesus. Because he knows why. The Bible says he knows 
attitude. They lie about to keep the right attitude. Amen. They talk about to keep the right attitude. Don't answer every discussion. Don't answer every discredit that people give to your life. Keep the right attitude. Maintain your peace. Amen. Maintain your godliness. Maintain your holiness. Maintain the love of God. It doesn't matter. God is looking at how we respond in a particular situation. Can I tell you a secret? Some situations are just a test. Is somebody with me today? Some situations are just a test. God is putting you through that situation to see how you will handle it. Will you handle it grumbling, cursing everybody, um, and speaking back about everybody, killing everybody, or you can still lift up your head and say, God is God, and I'm going to live by love. I'm going to live by faith, not by sight. Amen? Sometimes it's just a test. How you handle the test will determine the promotion you are going to get. But when you fail that test in that season, God is going to put you in that same situation all over again until you pass the test. Your attitude matters. Talk to your neighbor and say your attitude matters. It's not the time for us to have a bad and nasty attitude. There are people, they say they are saved, but one little thing happened, they begin to curse. I mean, they just use the F and the blah, 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 word. It's not of God. It's somebody with me today. Amen. We need to maintain godly attitude. Amen? Amen? And one of the things that God is, is looking at, the Bible says to the pure, all things are pure. Amen? And to the unpure, all things are unpure. So how do you see every situation? Do you see everything from the negative a filter or can you see it through the spirit of God? Amen? Sometimes we think we know, but you will never know until you know. Sometimes you may think you know, but you will never know until you know. And you can only truly know by the spirit of God, by the word of God. Hallelujah. Amen. And sometimes it's not about what you see in the natural but it is about what you see in the spirit. It is possible to see one thing in the natural, but then in a position, you have to position yourself to be able to see things in the spiritual. Is somebody with me? Amen. In the natural, it may look like you are all alone. How many of you have ever felt alone? Amen. In the natural, you may feel like, oh, I am all alone. But if God could open your eyes like the servant of the prophet, you will see that there are angels all around you. Hallelujah. I'm speaking to somebody tonight. You may feel that you are struggling by yourself. But I come to tell somebody, you are not alone. You are not by yourself. God is with you. Abba Father is with you. Jesus is with you. The Holy Spirit is with you. And there are angels all around you. But can you permit yourself to see things in the spirit instead of looking at your situation? In the natural. In the natural you may look like you are going nowhere. But in the spirit you are moving. You are shaking nations. You are doing things that God expected you to do. People will look at you and think you are stagnating. But they don't know the agenda of God in your life. They don't know that God is preparing something in you. God is building you. God is strengthening you. God is giving you a mentality of a champion. Is somebody with me? God is making your roots to be strengthened. People will look at us and say, oh, they started Zion a few months ago. How come one year now is May? And they still have a few people. I rather have a few people working and matching with God than to have a whole house full with people who are not committed to God and the vision of God. But they don't understand that when things are going on the way God wants them to go on, God is the one who knows what he's doing in you. He is giving you boldness. He's giving you tenacity. Because God, if God will give it to you too easy, easy come and easy go, you will become complacent. Amen? You will begin to take the grace of God for granted. You will not know how to stand in the face of adversary. So when God wants to train you to be champion, he will put you through challenges. He will put you through valleys. He will put you through things. So when you come out, you have the mind of a champion. Somebody say glory. glory. Hallelujah. So you have to be able to see things out from the eyes of God. And don't complain when God is cutting you. When God is pruning you. When God is shaping you. Be focused on the agenda of God. Keep on moving with God. Keep on speaking with God. Keep on walking with God. Keep on talking with God. Sooner or later you will look back the end. The Bible says uh, there shall come a day when you will look around. You will no longer find your enemies. You will look for them that used to persecute you. He said you will not find them anymore. Because why you are dead they think you are stagnated. But God is moving you by his spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. There shall come a day you look 
many of you believe the woman was caught? How many of you remember the woman was caught in adultery? Amen. They came men to stone her, to accuse her in front of Jesus. Ah, but Jesus did not submit the accusation of people because he understands. I did not come to take the righteous. I come to seek and save the lost. Is somebody with me in the house of the Lord? And then when they begin to accuse the woman, they wanted the woman to be stoned and all of those things were going on. They, but Jesus took that and began to write something. And the people begin to leave after Jesus Christ and put out the word. He said, he would have sin. Let him throw the first stone. If you have no sin in your life, dare to throw the first stone at me. If you have nothing in your life that is speaking against God, dare to throw the first stone at me. But they couldn't accuse her anymore because their accusation against the woman actually was accusing them themselves. Is somebody with me? And then when the woman talked around, Jesus said, where are those who are here to accuse you? Where are those who wanted to stone you? Where Because they began to leave. One by one. Hallelujah. God will defend you. Is somebody with me. So you must be able to see things. In the spirit. Hallelujah. And I believe that we must see things. By faith. Somebody say by faith. And when we begin to see those things by faith. We must be able to hold on to those things. Also by faith. If God show you you are going to marry this year, I don't care what the devil says. If God says you are going to win a million pounds, dollars, or whatever you choose to win, arrows, I don't care what you see in the natural. Say, God, I believe it. God, I receive it. Hallelujah. Amen. Be a man and a woman of faith. That's the spirit God is looking for. God is looking for people where everything else is falling. Where everybody is saying it's not going to rain. God is looking for a man and a woman who say, I see the cloud. I know it's going to rain. And when it rains, the crops are going to grow again. A different spirit. Say, I am a woman of different spirit. Say, I am a man of a different spirit. We need to have a different spirit. When everybody say it's bad, there need to be a people who rise up and say, ah, 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 ah. you may think one thing is bad, but I see a lot of things that are good. I'm not going to hold on to the bad, but I'm going to hold on into the good. Because God is good and his mercies endure forever. He is the minister of the house with me. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody has to have the spirit of Caleb. Who believe that no matter the giants you see in your life, you have to believe that these giants will come down. We can take them down. We can bring down the giants. Not by our power, but by the power of the almighty God. How many of you believe that the giants will bow down to the name of Jesus? The Bible says, call upon the name of the Lord and you shall be served. There is no other name in heaven or earth or man shall be saved. But the name of Jesus Christ. I don't care what you are going through. I don't care what they say about you. But I know me. I know a name. And that name is above every name. Whenever I call that name, demons begin to tremble. And things around me begin to shake. Because there is power in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. A man with a different spirit. I tell you to prophesy to your servant. Say, I have a different spirit. A different spirit. Hallelujah. God is looking for a people with a different spirit. When they say a house is going to go down, you stand in the face of the enemy and say, I don't think so. I don't think so. The Bible didn't say that. The Bible said when they are saying that it's the casting down. I'm going to rise up and say there is a lifting up. When they say that everything is going down, I'm going to lift up my eyes from where my help comes, my help comes from the Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. Come on, clap for Jesus. Yeah. We must not be like those people. God sent them to go and spy the land. And all they could see were giants. And they forgot to know that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I don't care what you see outside of you. But you must always remember who lives in the inside of you. His name is Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. He lives in you. He works with you. He talks with you. If you open your ears and listen, Jesus is always speaking something. 
see themselves as grasshopper. As a child of God, you must never have a grasshopper mentality. But you must have a winner mentality. Amen. You must have the mentality of a champion. The Bible says, let the mind be in you. That is also in Christ Jesus. The mind of Christ must be the mind of clear reveal. Must be the mind of you and you and you. You must have the mind of Christ. It's the mind of peace. It's the mind of joy. It's the mind of victory. Is the mind of holiness, is the mind of a winner, of a champion. Christ is not defeated. If any man be in Christ, you are in Christ. You are a new creation. All things have passed away. All things have become new. Because you are the new in Christ, you can walk like the new in Christ. You have a new mind in Jesus' name. Amen. If any man be in Christ, you must have a different spirit. Maybe you used to have the spirit of the one who is defeated. A victim to them. A victim and a spirit. But now you have the spirit of a victor. I am no longer a victim. I don't care what the enemy tried to put me through. I always look at that and tell them. I am a winner in Christ. I was born to win. I may go through some things. But I'm coming out. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A winner mentality. If you have the winner mentality, you will never be manipulated by people. You will never be crushed by people because you know the one who holds your tomorrow. Nobody holds your tomorrow, but Jesus holds your tomorrow. Yes, hallelujah. Believe in Jesus Christ. Amen. Your boss cannot determine your future. Mm -hmm. Your boss cannot determine your future. Jesus holds your future in his hand. Is somebody with me in the house of the Lord today? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, clap for Jesus. If you believe you are receiving a different spirit, I come to bind that demonic spirit that wants to make you discouraged. I come to, to bind anything that wants to bring you down. And I speak that you will rise up on your feet and you will begin to run. You will not faint and you will not become weary in Jesus' name. Amen. Caleb was a man. With a different spirit. Say, I have a different spirit. A different spirit. Put your hand upon your head. And say, oh Lord. Oh Lord. Give me a different spirit. Give me a different spirit. Give me a different spirit. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Even if you do see giants. Because let's face it. Devils really do exist. Hello? Amen. Devils really do exist. So when you see the enemy, what is in you, or what is your inner or outer reaction? When you really do see the giant, what is your inner or your outer reaction? Do you remain confident in our God who has all the power and authority to defeat the enemy or do you become scared? What is your reaction when trouble begins to come your way? In the verse that we just read, God is talking about Caleb. Out of 12 men who went and were sent, one man stood out. One man in this case stood out. He did not stand out because of his family background. He did not stand out because of his education. He did not stand out because of how tall he is or anything else. Caleb stood out because of his spirit. Can you imagine? Some of us women, we want to stand out because of the Brazilian hair we put, the lipstick we buy, the shoes we wear, but what about your spirit? What is going on underneath the clothes you wear? What kind of spirit do you have? Each and every one have to look in our own self in the mirror and stop pointing finger at the other person. What is your own responsibility in the equation? What is your spirit? It doesn't matter how beautiful we are, but if our spirit is wrong, and nobody can tell you about your own spirit more than you and God, you can think your spirit is right. 
But if you are truly a child of God, and you are submitted to God, and you really go to God and say, God, search me through and through. Reveal my own heart to me, and reveal my own spirit in this situation. God will tell you about your own spirit. Amen. And that's what God wants us to deal with. Not the spirit of your, your, your husband, your neighbor, your children, your pastor, or other people. God wants to speak to you individually. Because you are not responsible for the other people's salvation. But you are responsible for your salvation. And your relationship. And things with God. Hallelujah. Amen. Caleb would, would have decided to go along with the other ten men. Because everybody was speaking the same thing. But he decided to separate himself from the cabin. Do we have that kind of a spirit? That kind of mindset where everybody is saying, kill them, kill him, kill her. And we say, no, 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 wait a minute. Let's consult the Lord. When the brothers of Joseph wanted to kill him, there were at least two brothers who helped him. Say, so let's not kill him. Let's wait, let's not do this, let's not kill him. Everybody would have wanted to kill Joseph. The time God for the brother who stood up and said, no, let's not kill him. We must have a different spirit. Don't speak what everybody else is speaking. Don't think the way everybody else is thinking. You must have your own dress code given to you by God. Simply because everybody else is wearing it doesn't make it right. Simply because everybody say yes doesn't make it right. A different spirit. God saw something in Canada. I pray that all of us will capture today. Amen. Something that will separate you from the rest. That when you enter a room, your presence brings a different aroma. The room can be uptight. Everybody else looking down. And you enter the room. And you become the perfume that lights up the room. Amen. A different spirit. You enter the train, everybody's looking sour, like they are afraid, and you be the one to say good morning. You be the one to say good morning, and you be the one to smile at, at somebody and break the eyes. A different spirit. Have the kind of spirit that when people don't have hope anymore, when you come in and begin to speak, hope comes into the room. Oh, somebody needs to hear God today. That's the kind of person God wants you to be. If everybody is saying it's not going to rain in the land, there's an economic crisis, you say no. I have never seen the righteous forsaken. Nor his seed begging for bread. God will provide for his children. Amen. You will never beg spread. You will never be forsaken. Be the kind of person who knows what to do. When everybody is in the cave and they are being discouraged. Be like David, a man also with a different spirit. The Bible said David encouraged himself in the Lord. Can you be so strong in your faith in God, in your belief in God in the face of adversary? You encourage yourself in God. Is somebody with me today? Don't be easily weakened. That the enemy comes and break away your armor from your hand. But you must remember, I am a man, a woman with a different spirit. Amen. If everybody is packing out of road now, I don't care how many churches shut down. Zion will always be there open. Amen. Because God called Zion to stand. So one member, two members, we will be open. I will be here every Sunday. Amen. Every Thursday, God help me. A different spirit. Not easily knocked down, not easily broken, but stand upon the promises of God. In your marriage with your children, what are the things God is saying about your home, your children, your destiny? Be a woman, a man with a different spirit, dare to believe God. Say, I believe God. I believe, I believe God. God. Somebody clap for Jesus. Hallelujah. I think most of the things I've already said. And it starts with your mindset. Amen. And one of the things we need to pray 
is that God will give us the eyes to see in the spirit. To see in the spirit. Can you imagine in a place where other people are seeing giants? They are seeing defeat. What was it in Caleb that made him to see different? What did Caleb see? What did God place in Caleb that caused him to see different? Because he could see different, he was able to speak different. There is a song that says, I have made you too small in my eyes, oh God. Sometimes because of the things we've gone through in life, the enemy has made himself so big. And he has made us to see God so small. So if God can restore back your eyes of God, the way you see God, and destroy the negativities around you, and give you a clearer vision of who he is, until you begin to see your God for who he is in the face of every mountain, you will always consider your mountain to be too big. But in the presence of God, mountains melt. Oh, somebody needs to trust God today. In the presence of God, what other people can consider as bad luck, you see as a blessing. Because you understand, according to Romans 8, 28, all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord. And I call according to his purpose. Do you love God? Amen. Are you called by God? Are you positioned by God? Are you selected by God? He said all things. The good, the bad, and the ugly will work out for your good. Amen. Is somebody with me? Amen. If you are truly called by God. You don't need to be afraid. You have to trust God enough to give your bodies to God. You have to trust God enough to give your situation to God and bring it in front of God and say, God, this is it. This is my, what I'm facing. What do you think, God? And let God be the one to speak. Let God speak in your spirit. Let God speak in your mind. Proclaim the word of God in your situation. God will not leave you. I feel some of you are in transition. Amen. And in a place of transition, you must trust God. Hallelujah. You must hold on to God. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Sometimes we want to hold on to the familiar. We want to hold on to what we've been knowing all these years. But God said, Abraham, it's time to move forward. Amen. It's time to move forward. Is somebody hearing me? Amen. And don't be afraid if God is the one saying, in this season it's time to let go of the old and hold on to the new. Amen. You must follow God. Amen. You must obey God. You may not know exactly where you are going. You don't have all the details. But you must trust God in this season. Amen. And believe that when you let go of that which you are so used to, God will present to you that which he has for you in the future. Amen. Amen. A different spirit. Amen. I want everybody here to close your eyes. Close your eyes and begin to pray to God. Say, Father, in your own words, speak to him. We have heard your word today, Father. And we thank you for your word. And we believe your word, Father. Like God and God, make us women and men of a different spirit. Separate us from the crowd. 
Separate us from everybody else. Let us not be like the rest of the people. But in every situation, give us faith. Come on, somebody pray to God right now. Begin to talk to God about your spirit. What is that thing you have in your heart that is troubling you? What is that thing you have in your mind that is troubling you? What is that thing the enemy is telling you is too big? What is that thing you want God to do for you in this season? What is that thing you want to give to God? Say, God, I don't know everything about it. But Father, right here, I pray. It's a sorry. Right now, I pray, Father, that Father, you will give me a new spirit. You will give me a new spirit. Search me through and through. Everybody, close your eyes and pray for yourself. Close your eyes and pray for yourself. Speak to God and ask God, say, Father, what you gave to Caleb that made him to be a man of a different spirit. Father, give to me today. I receive a new spirit. I receive a new mindset. I receive transformation. Transform me, oh Lord. Take away my fears. And give me faith. Make me a woman or a man of faith. Make me a man who carries your spirit. Give me the spirit of holiness. Give me the spirit of purity. Transform my mind. Transform my spirit. Take away every fear. Take away every anxiety. Everything that is making you to be feeling down right now. Say, God, I give it to you. For greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. The same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead. That same spirit, resurrection power lives in you. May God give you that power of resurrection in you right now. Begin to speak to God and ask him what you want this Sunday. Say, God, I give my fears to you. I give my tears to you. I give everything to you and I receive what you have for me. I give you my own mind, my own intentions, my own belief, my own arguments, God, and I take your truth. I give away the lies and I take the truth from God. Come on, pray for yourself right now. Transform us, oh God. Fill us with your spirit. Let the music fill the house. Fill us with your spirit. Right now, God, saturate us in your presence. Bora baka sharaba mo 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 para basanto robo koshala laba bora kaba sante rebebe bora kasante raba ba 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 take away anxiety God take away fear God take away disappointment take away pain take away anything God that comes to make us feel like we are not worthy take away disappointment right now take away discouragement Father God take away anger take away Anything that is not of you, God, and give us your spirit. Give us your spirit. Give us your mind, God. Let there be an infused, oh God, right now of your spirit upon each and every one here, God. A renewing of mind, God. A renewing of thoughts, God. Make us women and men with a different spirit. Make us men and women with a different spirit. Let us put your spirit as a new jacket on. Let us put on your spirit. Put on the spirit of God. Put on the grace of God. Let your grace of God be upon us today. God, crown us with you today, God. Crown us with your presence, God. Take away offense. Take away the lies of the enemy. Take away anything, God. That is not of you, Father God. We silence Satan. We silence his voice. We silence his accusations. We silence his prayer. We silence in the name of Jesus. And we rise up with new promise. We rise up with peace. Let your peace be in our mind. Let 
church of peace be in our spirit. When we speak of things, God, help us to speak with your peace. Let our words be seasoned, my God. Be seasoned with salt, my word, my God, and my Lord. Cause us to be people of your grace, people of your spirit, to walk in the spirit, to walk in your life, Father God. My God, confuse the enemy right now as we stand in your presence and pray, God. All over the world, my God, wherever they have gathered against us, confuse the enemy, my God. Shield us with your peace. Shield us with your presence. Shield us with your grace. Shield us with your glory. We pray down your glory. We pray that your glory, God, over Zion, let the glory of God fill this place. Let the glory of God resound in this place. Let the blessings of God be in this place. Let your blessings God fall upon us. Water us again, Lord. Refresh us, O God. Let your spirit fall upon us like a fresh morning to you. Like a fresh morning to you. Fresh. Refresh us. Replenish us. Salalaba. Salalaba. Salabaya. Salalaba. Sulalaba. Rakatayet lele moshala. Let your rest fall upon your people. Let your rest fall. Let your rest fall, O God. The friend that is here. The friend that is here. The peace of God, the shalom of Jehovah, Borushiri Kapaya, Borobo Shanti Rebeba, Borushala Labahe, Solo Laboya, I pray joy. Let joy come in the house. I speak your joy in this house, God. I speak your peace in this house, God. I speak your unity in this house, God. That which was planned by the enemy, God, is shattered by your presence, God. We elevate Jesus in this house as a master of our Zion International Intercessory Ministries. We elevate you as king of this house, the king of glory, our defender, our protector, the one who guides us and keeps us and protects us and goes with us. Let your glory fill this place. Let your glory fill this place. Jesus. Let your glory fill this place. The record. Rasa Bahandi. Thank you, Jesus.